Well, first of all, thank you very much and for the opportunity to share some of our preliminary results. And this is some work that we've been doing for some time. I started collaborating with the Tropen Museum since 2007, and I've been working on this subject uh, for some time. But then here, what we would like to um, talk about is um, um, this impact proposition. So I guess... Um, well, our interest today is to share the preliminary results and also to hear a little bit from you. Are there GLAMs here, people working in institutions? Yes, okay, a few. Great, so I'd love to we, we would love to hear from you, like, does this method sort of ring a bell? Like, would you be able to uh, repeat this within your own institutions? And then are there Wikipedians, people that write on it? Yeah, great, and so also the question for you guys is, um, do you, do you see your um, behavior sort of reflected on some of our preliminary results? And um, like Paul Keller said this, this morning, you know, why is this important? Because um, we need to make that proposition, okay, if you're investing in, you know, making a new highway or um, new, new exhibitions or something else, or are you going to invest in giving free pictures uh, to people to be reused in crazy ways. And what we would like to show here today is that yes, because um, these sort of efforts uh, respond directly to the number one goal of heritage institutions, and that is to give access to collections. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to um, um, compare the before digitization and the after and see what's the difference in this accessibility to collections. Some of the preliminary results is that, yes, uh, access exponentially grows, um, that the preference for objects is different in an offline than online environment, and that the metadata and the quality of the images makes a difference. So if better metadata um, gets uh, more reuse and also better quality images get better reuse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's look at the background of the Trobe Museum, which is an eth ethnographical museum in Amsterdam. It opened its doors in 1926, so from then we could start counting the offline exposure of the collections to the public. Uh, there's a few older collections within the collection of the Trobe Museum that stem from Haarlem, where actually the Trobe Museum originates, and from a collection that was collected by a, uh, by a zoological society in Amsterdam. Those two old collections came together in the Trope Museum, and from then the collection started to grow up to the numbers you see here, or 370,000 pieces all, uh, all together. Uh, and uh, actually last year the collection, uh, well, it grew even more when we merged with the National Museum in, in Leiden, uh, the National Museum of Technology, the Museum Volkenkunde, and the Afrika Museum in Bergendal. And um, all together with one collection, which is officially called the Stichting Nationaal Museum van Wereldkultuur, the Museum for World Cultures. We are one of the largest collections uh, on, of uh, ethnography uh, in the world. Um, the Trobe Museum has always been, or well, at least tried to be, quite open when it comes to giving public access to the collections. Um, the, the digitization era started long ago, but it started really seriously in the year 2000 when um, the Ethnographic Museums of the Netherlands together decided to start using the museum system, TMS, as a collection management uh, system. And from then, uh, metadata were added, images were produced or reproduced from old slides. And in 2005, the museum launched an online website, an online collection database, which showed as much content as possible, even though the pictures weren't very good, or the metadata, metadata were not very complete. And so um, from there it was a small step to, to Wikipedia. Um, in 2009, Gerard Meijsen contacted the Trope Museum whether we were interested to upload some of our content. And uh, uh, it, you know, we, we did. We were quite interested to do that. It was uh, uh, um, you know, it, an easy follow-up step for our own website. Uh, we started small with a pilot because not everybody was really convinced whether it was the way to go. Um, we started a pilot with a little over 2,000 images and objects of the Suriname Collection alongside an exhibition about maroon and maroon art. And um, we actually started creating uh, in the museum a lemma with Wikipedians who wrote on the spot about this topic. And um, 
it's, it, was, it was a success. It was considered to be successful also by the staff of the museum. So the next step was to upload a large amount of images. We started with 37,000 photographs from the photographic collections featuring the Netherlands, East Indies and Indonesia. Uh, Martin Darmers did all the uploading for us. He should get the credits for, the, for all that work. And um, followed by um, six, six or seven, uh, seven thousand object images in 2010. Um, then Wiki Africa uh, started 2012 and also came with a question what do you have for Africa? What can you upload there? And a little over 4,000 images were uploaded. So now, altogether, uh, Trope Museum content is uh, almost 50,000 images. And what's the impact of that? Um, we started uh, counting. We've used Beglama A2, uh, which is a very useful tool. And Beglama uh, counts for every month how many page views are there on Wikipedia uh, 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 looking at pages that show images from the collection of the Trove Museum, from the Wikimedia content of the Trove Museum. And it's, um, we've measured, because not every month is, is, is measured, is, uh, is registered. So we've used July of each year from 2010, because every Ju July was there, except for 2015, because that's only in two months. So we've uh, done April for 2015, and we see that the number of articles is growing, um, even though the number of images was not at that time. And only in 2012, the number of articles, the number of page views is growing increasingly, uh, which was the year that uh, Wiki Africa uh, project was, uh, was launched. So we added another 4,000. We're not sure whether that is directly related, but it's, it's a striking difference going from two to four and then to seven, and then it stays a little the same. Um, so you see it also in a graph. It's going up, and it's still going up. So another one of our, um, okay, what can we compare? If we're trying to compare the impact in access, we thought, okay, what information do we have? We have the information about um, exhibits. So how many objects have been seen through exhibitions? And who has seen them? Visitors of the exhibition. So we looked at the year reports of the Institute for about a century, and the, the, that's the top graph. And so what you can see is that increasingly it goes up. There's been some up and downs here and there. There was a war. Um, the museum was closed uh, for renovation for some time. And there was a very popular exhibit that's the highest point, which uh, brought the largest number of visitors ever, well, since um, we've been counting, I guess, a century or so, for uh, there were 300,000 people that came to see the exhibition then. Um, the chart, uh, the lines below, is also using this Baglama 2 um, tool, and that shows um, what we consider, okay, the similar or the comparable um, measure online. So these are how many people have uh, viewed content uh, in Wikipedia that contains images from um, the Tropen Museum. And so what you see here is um, a chart that's, again, sort of going up. And there's a little bit of a decline there. Um, but in general, it's promising. Um, I think there was some sort of technical difficulty there uh, or a change in methodology. So the, the, there's a drop in some of the months. The difference is uh, the top graph is about a century long. The lower graph is about one of the longest that this tool allows, five years old. Um, and what you see here is um, uh, also a different dimension, um, whereas 300,000 people walked in the Tropen Museum to see the objects. Uh, more than, well, about 18 million people have seen um, uh, the content in Wikipedia in one month. <laughs> so that's the, highest, that's the highest peak on the lower chart. And so this is interesting for us to understand, okay, the dimensions are different. Um, um, certainly the impact is, you know, of another scale. Do you see I think. 
this is this is a I think the follow up um, deep analysis that we're gonna have to that we're gonna have to do. Uh, we know the history of the museum really well, but what has happened online that we need to do a little bit more research. Again, these drops we don't know what's going on, and then the other uh, something happened in early June 2014. Uh, so we have to sort of go see back and see what what what, what did we do there? <laughs> what did the Thropen Museum do there? Not to to allow that to happen, um, and yeah, perhaps also compare to maybe this is a question also for for everybody if there's ideas on how to uh, how to um, interpret this like uh, where do we look I mean probably now since we've been here we thought hey wiki Africa so pr we will probably take a look at what has happened in Gr wiki Africa and and see if there's a relationship between uh, that project mm -hmm. and the use of the tropen collections in Wikimedia I think I think we're going to be jumping around. Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. <coughs> um, I'll, I can say something in short about the, the method we used using TMS. Uh, since we have TMS in 2000, we always uh, plan and record uh, uh, exhibitions in, uh, in the database. So that made it very easy to see the connection between how many objects are in uh, an exhibition and how many visitors go to the exhibition. So what's the exposure of, one, of an object? Um, within the process of the last 15 years, we've also tried, as much as we could, to document exhibitions from the past. So from the beginning of the existence of the Institute, we've been recording the exhibitions and looking for the objects that were there. So we have been able to measure that, uh, although not all the data are still there, so that's a limitation. We cannot record every object that has been on display for the last 100 years. It's a bit appears to be impossible. Uh, so we have to do it with the data that we have. So that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a big but over there. Mm -hmm. uh, what we found using this method is that um, only two objects have been used in an exhibition ten times and four have been used nine times and so you see the scale is gliding from ten to one and the, are getting, the numbers are getting larger and larger and you see that, that almost five and a half 100,000 objects were never on display as far as it was recorded. It's only 8.7% that has been exposed in an exhibition to the, to the public. Uh, and I should say that this goes for the, the collection of the National Museum of World Cultures as a whole, not only for the Trope Museum. Mm -hmm. uh, when we look at the data from Wikipedia, um, now, we created a data set based on the objects that were used in the exhibitions in the history of the museum. And uh, we created the data set that, that said, was it five times and up? Mm -hmm. Five times and up used in an exhibition. And in that data set, we looked at how, how did these objects do in Wikipedia. And the, the, the best hit we found was this image of two uh, Kenya Dayaks. Um, it has been... Um, uh, how should I read it in long term? Um, it's it is one percent. No, I've, I'm I'm confused. Yeah, can you? Um, yeah, sorry. I've lost. Um, um, so I guess um, what we were trying to see is like what's this long tail thing? Um, so there's uh, the the World Museum has more than half a million objects, six hundred thousand. How many times have they been seen? Apparently, physically, is the it, so the slide before. So there's um, about eight percent, eight point seven percent of the objects have ever been seen in exhibits, whereas. In Wikipedia, only 1% of the world um, cultures collection has been used in articles. So let's see. This mm -hmm. is, yeah. yeah. One. Oh yeah, and then um, so I guess f f for us was actually you know another sort of comparison moment. Um, how can you compare? So okay, 100 years versus 50 uh, years, and then you know the world uh, cultures collection that's 600,000 objects, and you know in one museum versus um, the uh, um, how many objects? 15,000 objects available in Wikimedia, and how are they used? And then what you see is well the the numbers I can't read very well, but um, the most popular is used, uh, can you see that? One, in 135 articles. 
Um, so that's very different than being in 10 exhibits. And that means as well that, you know, if there's millions of people coming into these pages per month, um, so the exposure is, again, of a different order. Um, uh, the curve is a little bit softer, therefore, on the Wikipedia articles than on the exhibitions. It's a little bit sharper um, sort of um, curve. Um, and I guess then to close, um, what are our conclusions, as I keep repeating, is um, exponential growth in the access to collections when you publish on um, a Wikipedia, um, or, uh, sorry, in the Wikimedia Commons, because then it gets picked up, hopefully, into the Wikipedia. One of the th questions that we still have for the future, and thank you for the Baglama to tool and for the Glamorous tool, we're hoping actually to count. A lot of this has to be manual, so if anybody's interested in uh, you know, out helping automate these processes, um, what we're trying to do is then to see how is this dynamic um, in time. So how is it possible that once uh, 15,000 objects are available in Wikimedia, only so few get picked up for these articles? And what are the key languages and you know, how is this sort of uh, um, um, seeping through of the images into the various articles? So that's one of the next steps. Uh, another important um, realization is also that um, people position collections in completely new context, which is really nice. Um, and there's uh, different preferences, online and offline. What I said, you know, what, what Richard said, the most popular object off-site is this book, whereas the most popular object online from our data set is that photograph. So it's a, maybe a 2D, 3D uh, difference. We still have to do more research on that. Again, these are preliminary results. And um, most important is, of course, that everything that happens here is because everybody makes an effort. Since we've been working on this project, there's been many little changes in the Wikipedia because we found just this morning, and another, another uh, um, error. So we were, you know, changing some things in the Wikipedia. So, you know, everything that happens here is really with the effort of every single individual. So I guess thank you for everybody, and you know, an invitation to continue to um, collaborate in the articles. So if there's questions or anything, please. Thank you. Oh. Mm -hmm.